This video was sponsored by Crucial, but more specifically the Crucial P3 and P5 Plus, and I've done reviews on these SSDs, which I'll put in the description below. Just a little bit of a spoiler, these are the types of drives that will benefit from the tutorial that I'm doing today. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I hope you are well. Today, I wanna to put some confusion aside in the I have an SSD statement, because not all SSDs are created equally. So a few months ago, my statement still would have been correct in that not all SSDs are created equally, but it would have been for the sake of marginal difference or marginal gains from your SSD. And I'm gonna be focusing more on this from a gaming perspective. Let's start off with understanding the five different major types of SSDs, and I'll put pictures in front of you so that you can see and understand. But the first one is a SATA SSD. Now this was more commonplace in laptops quite a few years ago. Obviously laptops have changed now to have more NVMEs, but we still use these SATA SSDs as mass storage, or I say mass storage inside of desktops and still some laptops today. Then we have M.2 SATA, which depends on the form factor of your motherboard. So a lot of people have got confused between M.2 SATA as well as NVMe. Next, we have M SATA. And again, this is a different form factor. So this would be applicable in different devices. But again, it's not commonplace, especially in more of your consumer realm. Then we have NVMe, which is our main talking topic today. And that is commonly found in most bolts or most modern bolts and desktops, as well as laptops and they are the fastest that you can currently get commercially. Last is U.2, but this is more for enterprise solutions, but it is a type of SSD, so I do have to cover it. Now today, we're only gonna be focused on NVMe because it is the latest technology, and what I'm talking about today is only applicable to NVMe, which I'll understand just now. But just for information, there are three factors when looking at NVMe. Yes, there's a host, but it would be size, speed, and capacity. Generally, NVMEs are more expensive, and this is because they are faster and later technology, but this wouldn't have made a difference as mentioned earlier on towards gaming performance, but we're gonna see how that's changed now. So why this video now? Well, this is because the introduction of something called direct storage from Windows. It's actually also known as a bypass IO. And this was teased in October of last year for version 1.1 and actually rolled out on the 11th of November of last year, which is 2022. Now note that this does apply to both Windows 10 and 11. However, it is more efficient on Windows 11. And I think this is Microsoft's way of saying, hey, go to 11 because they do want users to go to the latest version of of Windows. So let's take a look at a graph and this is compliments of Microsoft of what it used to look like versus what it looks like now. So historically we had to go from our NVMe driver into the storage stack and you can see the different elements of storage stack. From there it had to go into the volume stack and from volume stack it had to go into file system and then into file manager which also had a mini filter A and mini filter B depending on how your system worked and then into the IO manager and then into the application. So what's happened now is the NVMe driver or disk directly interfaces with the file system and then into the IO manager, which bypasses, hence the name bypass IO, right into the IO manager. So the application of this is more geared towards gaming and I'll explain why. It's all got to do with something called decompression. Now what they've worked out, they've always known, but they've had to work out a way in order to do it, was that GPUs were way more efficient at image decompression than CPUs were. So this is why we had new gen consoles which had direct storage and you were required to have a 7000 read, 7000 write in order to be able to utilize that speed or enjoy that speed coming from an NVMe. Now we're gonna have the same or we do have the same for PCs, it's just very little known. So what this means is that fashion statement NVMe that we used to have or still do have being 7,000 read, 7,000 write, or 7,400 read and so on, is now actually going to be able to be utilized by your machine to affect an actual performance gain. Right now, the main and call it only benefits is that it has way faster loading times than I previously had. And we can see an image from Microsoft in which it showed a 40% gain in loading time and there's the avocados on your screen. The benefit for me is not just in faster gaming load times, it's in the future benefits. So if we think about it, if we're sending the information to the right sources in our computer, i.e. for decompression, we are utilizing the GPU rather than the CPU for decompression, 
This means that load is going to be taken off the CPU, which means that it's going to be able to run cooler or run other tasks more efficiently because we're actually saying you do this and you do this because you are more efficient at it. So I'm really interested to see what the evolution of bypass IO is. And I think that not only is it going to be loading times, but we're actually going to see better frame rates in our games because our CPU and GPU are being used more efficiently. We could be looking at more stable outputs, better frames per second, better 1% lows, less images or frames dropped, as well as better rendering of images that are far away, which is where decompression comes in most. So to conclude, it's a really good idea to start now to actually have an NVMe as your main drive and only operate games from your NVMe, especially if you're on Windows 11. Guys, I really hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. If you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below. Look for Forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers. Goodbye.